Hello everyone, good morning. My name is Mustafa Mohamed Boche and in today's tutorial, I'm going to explain to you why it is important for you not to do your form validation at the front end. Why you're not supposed to use any HTML form attribute to validate your form, nor even use JavaScript at the front end to even um, validate your form before sending it to the back end. And why it is important for you to do all your form validations from the back end so for instance uh, we have this simple you know blog page right where bloggers can come in and register this application is actually in um, Django okay so let's say someone comes to your page and then they click on the register button right and then you have this form over here so let's go into the code and then see what are the attributes in the form so from this we see that we are collecting the the full name, the email, the password, and I want to confirm the password, right? Before we submit. So now if we go inside our page, you realize that we have this simple HTML input um, tag here. So this input is taking test for the uh, full name. And then we have the email, which is this. And then we have, how do you call it? the password and then we have the confirm password but right over here you realize that at the uh, how do you call it at the full name section where we are taking the uh, the full name input we've actually limited the maximum length that the user can type to what to four and also on the form the form also has an action button right so when everything is done and then for instance we check everything and everything is okay we want the form to process at this particular URL, right? So it should go to slash test to have the form processed. So now let's go back to our page. And this form is actually being processed by a JavaScript function, which is the on register. So let's go into our on register. So for instance, let's say our, our on register is actually doing some validation, right? Some JavaScript validation. Aside, we have been our own uh, HTML validation, okay, the tags that we are using, the attributes, sorry, the HTML attributes that we are using to validate our form, we are actually doing our own um, JavaScript validations, right? And then when everything is done, then the JavaScript actually permits the form to send to the above URL, which is the slash test. So now if we go to the page, you realize that if I reload this page and then, for instance, I click on register, right? I can't type more than four characters because per the HTML attribute, form attribute that we indicated, which is the maximum length, we indicated that the maximum length I want to take over here is supposed to be what? Four. And then we also indicated that this particular input is supposed to be of type what? Email, which is right over here, right? It's supposed to be of type of what email so now you realize that when i try and en enter more than four characters it doesn't permit me now let me enter some email this is not a valid email let's enter some password let's say one two three four another password one two three four just to confirm now if i try submitting this this is going to actually submit no this sorry this will fail this will fail because this is not a valid email so if i try submitting it says what well, please enter what an email address so let's say let me add let me add what at gmail.com for instance sorry gmail.com now when i submit this is actually going to what this is actually going to submit so it takes us to this url which says what form submitted now the reason why i'm saying that you are not supposed to rely on this way of validation is first and foremost let's crack everything down from one at a time over here we don't want users to be able to what to input more than four characters anyone with any basic html knowledge can bypass this validation so for instance if the person right clicks on this and then goes to inspect element right they can see that you have what maximum length over here they can actually double click on this and then remove that attribute from there entirely so now that that attribute has been removed 
The person can type more than four characters. This is why it is important for you not to do your form validation using the HTML uh, form attribute or even JavaScript. Now we'll come to the JavaScript aspect. So this is the first one. Now in this particular section, if we submit this form, this is actually going to submit again because over here we have what we actually have what an email address so in our uh, how do you call it in our form we indicated that this is supposed to be an email so if we try entering something which is not an email if i take this out and i try submitting the, uh, the form it will not submit now back again if the person right clicks and then go to inspect element again Sorry, let me reload this page so that everything loads. Okay, so let me type in something. So we are done with the full name aspect where we have the HTML attribute maximum length to check the length of you know the string uh, entered. Now, when we come here to the email aspect, anyone with right now, if I type something like this and I try submitting. That will not also submit because this is not a valid email. So, like I'm saying, anyone with basic HTML knowledge can bypass this. So, if the person also right clicks on this and then comes to the inspect elements, they can see that you are limiting them from submitting the form because you've indicated this input as an email. So, because it's an email, they can't submit. So, what they can also do is just click on this. And remove this from there or even change it to test so now that they've changed this to test this is no longer going to check whether the input over here which is this garbage whether or not it's an email so if I try submitting the form that is also going to submit so that is why you know like I'm saying you're not supposed to rely on um, HTML elements to do your form validation. Aside you relying on HTML element to do your form validation, this form actually, if we, how do you call it? For instance, if anyone, any bad person out there that is actually visiting your page, right? Successfully managed to navigate through your code and then understand what your code is doing. So for instance, let's say they come to the realization that from here when you right click and then you inspect the element and you go to the form you realize that there is actually an action right there is this on submit and then there is this javascript code which is the on register which is actually handling the what the form so for instance this bad guy out there has been able to navigate through your html element and then they've realized that oh you have a javascript function which is actually handling the form so for instance when we come to the debugger and then inside the script we have this um, script down here the index and then the what the blogger so inside the blogger let's say the bad guy had successfully managed to navigate through all your code and then they've come to the realization that this particular function that you have here which is the on register is what is handling the form and inside the on register you realize that let's say this what you see right over here is some form validations right but when you are done with the form validation you don't do anything else except you let the form successfully what submit so the event or target or submit will actually submit the form to the action which is indicated on the form so if you go to the inspect element you realize that the action of the form goes to what slash test and that is all that we are using the JavaScript to do, which is right over here. If we go inside the code, we are using our JavaScript to just what? Submit the form when it's done its quote unquote validation. So if the bad guy out there manages to figure out that, okay, you are using the JavaScript to do your form validation and they don't want your JavaScript to work, right? But they want to get their way with whatever they are trying to do they can actually go to your form and where it says where it has the attribute on submit they can actually remove that attribute from there as well 
So what they've actually done is they've disabled the JavaScript which is supposed to handle this form, right? And now if they go further and for instance, they remove the maximum length, okay? Let's see, they remove the maximum length from there as well. And then they come to the email section and then they remove this attribute that's the sorry they change the type from email to test for instance and then they key in whatever that they want whatever it is that they want sorry and then let's come down here and then they key in the password and they key in the password this form will actually submit so you realize that all the rules that you place in your form before which is the full name is not supposed to be more than four characters the email is supposed to be a valid email quote unquote per you using the HTML form attribute and then the password this bad person has money to bypass all this because they've removed one this attribute from there so this is what uh, this does not have any validation. This email too does not have any validation because they've changed that attribute, the type attribute from uh, email to test, and then they've indicated their respective email and then confirming their a uh, sorry their password and they've confirmed the password. So when they submit, this will actually submit again. So this is why it is important for you to do all your form validation at the server end. So you realize that. If, for instance, I have not written any server code for this, so realize that if you if you actually write um, all your validation at the server end, you use you know you use your server code to check whether the full name that has been submitted is actually of length what four. That's the first thing that you're going to check, and then you may also check whether or not the email that the person submitted is an actual email pair you know the code that you are going to write over there so this is all i can say on that so i hope uh, this tutorial is useful to you and then when you are writing your script you may you know consider some of these things so i hope it's useful to you and i'll see you in the next tutorial bye bye